it's been quite a week from that front, I can tell you. And also my pen kept running out, Judith, which was my <laughs> final score at one point. Well, <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm exhausted by how, mm, what's, the, what's the low tech old school, my pen kept running out. I mean, well, that's the least of your worries, isn't it? Someone's given me a better pen. It was a biro, and it, I think fine film of Saharan sand that covers everything here at the moment is uh, disabling my biro, whereas a rollable ink pen works perfectly. Well, it's interesting you should say that because I'm a big fan of biros. Oh, I don't like biros at all. In now. a strange sort of a way, I like black ones and I use them all the time and I use them till they run out and then I give myself a new one and, you know, hush my mouth, a whole bag of about a dozen costs £1.89. <laughs> Welcome to Own It, your business and your life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Morning, morning, caller. Morning. We are we are online, but still on next door's neighbours because although our router has arrived and allegedly our fast broadband has been connected, we are not able to make it work yet. But it, the, interesting, you say that as if we know that already. That is new information to both me and the listener. Well, I will go through. I've got a very funny Greek story for you. Yes. Do you want to start with it, or is it? Does it fit into another section? No, it fits in. It fits into my week. So uh, yes. shall I go? go. For it? Yes, please, because okay. mine's a mini rant warning. Okay. All right, good. So last week there was a small power cut of about two or three hours. And when it came back on, my internet didn't come back on. And the phone, I didn't realise that the phone line wasn't working either. Because contrary to how it works in the UK, in Greek, Greece, your phone line comes from your internet, not the other way around. Okay. And so I thought, oh, it will come back on at some point. So I kept waiting and waiting and, and nothing happened. So then I spoke to my landlord about ringing Cosmote, which is the Greek equivalent of um, BT. Indeed, indeed, I've Googled them in podcasts <laughs> past to check the spelling. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like B, British BT, even more impenetrable. And, and there's a foreign language involved. <laughs> yeah, indeed. A nightmare. Yeah. So anyway, Tony gave me permission to uh, pretend to be his wife and he gave me his um, the correct name on the account and also his tax number, which they might have asked for. But I knew from previous um, tales that I, there was no point in ringing them without a mobile, a Greek mobile, because they won't um, take an English mobile. So I trotted down to Katerina's supermarket with Sarah to get myself a Greek SIM card to put into my smartphone. Because the lady's there. I'm exhausted already, Nicola. I know, it gets funnier. Then you have to take your pass- passport because they don't do burner phones in, the, in Greece. They do, um, you have to be registered. Every number has to be registered. Makes you think how easy it would be to cut down crime if you did that in the UK, doesn't it? And it, it also, but it makes it much easier for the powers that be to watch your every move and That's listen to true. it. Yes, yes, very true. But at this, at this stage, I was willing for them to do that. <laughs> yes, so quite. <laughs> went, went back at, oh, she tried to turn it into English for me, but she said, no, the phone is blocked. So I have to then go back up the hill, uh, get a log on to the O2 website, apply, hunt about to find out how to get my phone unlocked, which they are willing to do if you've had your phone blocked for more than a year. Yes, I knew that, yes. Have to pay, but you have to pay something like fifteen pounds, and it said I didn't have enough balance. So I then went and topped up by thirty pounds, and then I came back, and it still said I didn't have enough balance. So I'm getting quite angry by this point, and Sarah's saying, "Look, for God's sake, it just might not have refreshed itself. So give it a little while, calm down, and see what happens." So finally, get my Greek SIM in, and um, and I'm able to um, into my unlocked phone, and I'm able to ring Cosmote. By this time, it's the weekend, so they're shut. So I had to wait till Monday morning. So Monday morning, bright and fresh, I'm on the phone to Cosmote. And actually, it was quite a pleasant experience. All three people I spoke to spoke very good English, including Yorges at the end, who informed me that, no, there was nothing wrong with my telephone line and there's nothing wrong with my internet. The problem is, of course, that they've upgraded me to the super fast broadband I've requested, but that my router can't cope with it. Ah. So I said, well, will you be sending a router? And they said, yes, we will, but you have a postal problem in your area. So there is only, um, everything's getting delivered to Cardamili Post Office, but there's only one delivery a week now from Cardamili, the next village, which is only seven miles away, um, to Stupa. And so what we're doing is, because the, the one delivery can't fit all the parcels in his van, 
So he's, they're sending out slips of paper instead, which then get delivered to where your parcels would have been delivered. And you have to then go and make arrangements to go and pick up your parcel in Cardamini Post Office. I don't have a car. Anyway, my landlord steps in and says, well, we're going to Kalamata so we can get it for you. So he, he did that yesterday. And then what you, they do is they text him. He has to call the phone number. They give him a voucher code and he takes the voucher code to Cardamini Post Office and gets the router. And thus it turned out to be. He turned up with it this morning and we are in the process or series of puzzling out how to make it work. But it's been quite a week from that front, I can tell you. And also my pen kept running out, Judith, which was like the final <laughs> score at one point. It well, I'm, ex- I'm exhausted by how, mm, what's, the, what's the low tech old school, my pen kept running out. I mean, well, that's the least of your worries, isn't it? But it's this, in the same sort of old fashioned life yes. where we had to go and do everything. I know, I know. I get rather cross if I have to do that, to be honest. I know. But, you know, we persevered. That's the main thing. And, um, yes. and someone, someone's given me a better pen. It was a biro. And it, I think the Saharan sand, that fine film of Saharan sand that covers everything here at the moment, is, uh, is innate, disabling my biro, whereas a rollable ink pen works perfectly. Well, it's interesting you should say that because I'm a big fan of biros. Oh, I don't like biros at all. In now. a strange sort of a way. I like black ones and I use them all the time and I use them till they run out and then I give myself a new one. And, you know, hush my mouth, a whole bag of about a dozen costs £1.89. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so that's it, really. And I, oh, the only other thing is my hand twanged this morning. <clears throat> I was dr- brushing my hair and I've got this twang in my thumb, the base of my thumb. It feels like there's a nerve out of place, which is not good because that's my mouse thumb. Uh, so what's the lesson there? Stop Sorry. fussing with your hair, isn't it? I was just giving it a little brush. It's hardly fussing, is it? I, don't, I, had to un, um, I don't brush my hair because my hair's so short, I style it with my fingers. But when it gets long, I have to get my brush out. And it isn't long for very long before I get up to the hairdressers. And last week I had to fish it out before going to find the new woman. But uh, I don't know where it is today, for instance. And once I forgot to take it to the Caribbean for a month and I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm giving up the old blow drying. I don't think I can blow dry right now with this thumb. Mm. Anyway, so obviously the moon has been in retrograde for my planet of communications or something, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you, hear you say that, but po- mm, well, that is I made a possibility. It up to you. That is, a, that is a possibility. However, I don't think those situations were relevant at the time you were struggling from this. But, you know, what, what I normally keep my, as you know, my eye on that sort of thing. Um, and I normally, if you were right, I'd be going, oh, yes, like that in a yeah. kind of a way. But I'm not because I don't yeah. think that was right. <laughs> so what's your rant then? Oh, I've got quite a long rant. Pin back oh, your luggles. I'll sit back. Okay, uh, earlier in the week, uh, no, Saturday it happened, uh, I got a note, well, it, it was Tuesday before it happened, I, got, I took delivery of a new credit card, the one I use for my business, and some of the people, my suppliers who direct debit my credit card had been nagging me for weeks, some of the American ones, weeks that my card was expiring, and I should update my details, or they would no longer be able to, you know, guarantee continuity of service. Um, but HSBC don't send a new card until the middle of the month before. So my card expires at the end of May and they send it out on about the 15th of May. And being a nomad, new cards don't always arrive in a straightforward fashion. They take a somewhat circuitous route to find me. But as soon as it arrived and being a neat accountant-like person, I was rather looking forward to a session where I would update my expiry date for Amazon, Vodafone, my hosting company, two domain name companies, PayPal, WebEx, Skype, Audioboom, Dropbox, Dropbox, Waitrose, iTunes, Transport for London, GoDaddy, etc. All of these go out every month in almost identical or mostly identical amounts. One of my months is the same as every other month and it's the same as every other month and it has been for years. And I wasn't actually, it must be remembered at this point, I wasn't actually paying any bills. I was just updating the expiry date and the card even had the same number and the same month. So all I had to actually do was change 2018 to 2021. However, typically, and no surprise to me, this triggered a fraud alert at HSBC. 
Oh, no. So a handful of the uh, attempted updates of the card and the risk of the continuity to service were not possible to do until I'd called HSBC, put through to the fraud team, confirmed I did indeed want to pay these people the same amount of money this month that I pay every month, and that they of all people should know they just sent me a new bloody card with which to undertake this process. I swear, Nicola, this happens at least once a month that the fraud term is triggered, fraud team is triggered, yeah, sometimes yeah. twice, and they are never, repeat never, over extraordinary payments, just the same regular tiny regular ones I make every month you know 9.99 to audio boom I think it's because they're in dollars and also because they're online not me in the flesh and I know I should be grateful that they are hyper vigilant uh, and alerted to potential frauds but this is just a joke and I monitor my expenditure online several times a week my patterns are uber regular why do they put me through this all the time it's painful and time consuming but I want to end my rant by saying I'm grateful that the card arrived without incident. Last time I had to go to, to London to fetch it and organise a second one. And this time I decided not to panic and that it would turn up here in some way. And I manifested the smooth arrival of the replacement and in time to cope with this sort of nonsense. Uh, and I decided not to stress about that and that was uh, okay. But if they would just stand out and not overreact, as is their habit, it's, such, it's just so wasteful. And what I feel quite cross about, actually, and it's the same with GDPR, it's, it's the low hanging, you know, not least the hanging on the phone for hours while someone with a very slow brain checks my silly little transactions, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that they're going for the low hanging fruit and not the real fraudsters who get away with it all day long. And I think that's what will happen with GDPR as well. It'll stop most of the ordinary nice people that we quite like hearing from, but the people where there's no unsubscribe link on the bottom, it won't stop them. And that last sentence is my real gripe. You know, the rest is just a, a preambulation to get to the point really which is <laughs> you know nothing works as it's supposed to moan old age pension and moan really <laughs> i've no and i well i did the gdpr rate thing and i lost 289 people who didn't um reconfirm but i did keep um over 100 who did reconfirm out of, out of the people who were ostensibly in europe um and now i've noticed that everyone's sending it through saying I know I've updated my privacy policy and they're not doing anything to get me to reconfirm. So they're just keeping the people that were in their database from Europe without making us reconfirm our interest. And um, so, you know, you're staying on people's lists that you don't necessarily want to be on. And, and like you say, the people who are diligent and are actually getting me to reconfirm my interest are the people I would, you know, really want to hear from and would do it. So you're right. It's just the, the spammers basically who are yeah. not, not yeah. playing ball with this and everyone else no. is, Panicking unnecessarily. Yes. Say so, la vie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no surprises there. <laughs> So what's fueled your fire this week then? Uh, well, I've got one, two, three, four, five things, almost none of them to do with work. Do you want me to start? Well, we'll do, yeah, do, let's do a couple and then do mine and then come back to you. Well, I'm happy for you to go first. Go first. Okay. Mine are all quite short. Okay. Well, I've been um, working through the Playing to Win book this week and I really like it a lot. I think now, it's Darling, good. you told us that last yeah. week. So this is your, okay, just so it's, it's a two-week book, is it? Well, it's it's a, a book that I'm now having read it, starting to actually action. I see, I see. So last week reading, this week implementation. Yes, yes exactly. Okay. Putting running okay. my own business through the filters. Um, okay. And, and re, re reconfirming my commitment to my business and um, yep. trying not to get distracted by all the other lovely opportunities that come along. But it gives me a nice filter now to put those opportunities through. Um, because what sort of other lovely opportunities do come along by the way uh, joint venture kind of things where people have um you you told us you were going to do one of those last friday did you yeah, resist I just had the call this morning it was a different thing they've got a business between them. they called it the ugly middle child which was quite funny because they've got each of them got their own businesses and this uh, they've got this business in the middle that they're not making any money from and then they've got you know it, cut, it washes its face but doesn't pay them and they're now deciding to put the last of last year's profit into a proper marketing campaign to give it a real go, to give this child a chance to get grow up and, and get out of the house. And uh, so they've come to me to see if I would be interested in getting involved on a joint venture basis. And it's a product, so I am interested because I'm very interested in product now. I, I really want to be... Um, and selling. why would you prefer to do that on a JV basis than just have them pay you a fee? Because they haven't got any money to pay me a fee. I thought you said they... They, well, there's just some combine some of their profits. Yeah, okay. there is, but there's not enough to pay me a fee and pay for marketing. 
Okay. So I've said, let's run a very limited time experiment. Let's get 100 people to your sales page. You know, you've said that every time you show these things to people, they love them. So let's show them to people on Facebook via a video and see if we yep. can, um, you know, make some sales. And if we can, and they've got lots of other products that could be upsold on the back end. And it, it's a nice, nice little business, but they've okay. never, never paid it attention long enough to actually take action on it. So, mm. so it's an, an actual physical product. It's a thing. Yes, it's a thing that's much less complicated than all the other things. <laughs> okay, good. It's an uncomplicated thing. Right, you go. Uh, so you finished because I interrupted you talking about playing to win. Oh, well, no, I was just saying, you know, how useful I'm finding it, putting my business through it and refocusing my business through a new lens. And, um, okay. It's and the filter nice. helps you decide what JV will slip past your yes. boundaries. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Go on then. Uh, well, um, my brother and sister-in-law have three children and the middle child is terribly handsome and it was his 29th birthday on Sunday and he bought his, I, uh, I phoned him, no, what did I do? I was in the middle of phoning him when the text came from him to thank me for his birthday card and I said, oh, I was just phoning you, so he phoned me back and to tell me, as, as all boys do and probably girls as well, I think I probably did it, that he just bought his first car which was a convertible Saab, which is very exciting. Oh, nice. And that he was going, then going out to lunch at a restaurant in Hearn Hill, which is a place you will know a bit of because it was close to Tulls Hill where you lived. Yeah. And Hearn Hill is where I bought my first flat in 1979 for £9,000. Nine. And oh, how we laugh to be able to tell a 29-year-old boy in 2018 that you could buy a flat in his neighbourhood for £9,000 way back when. You know, it's just... Um, believable now isn't it you can't I mean you know I mean I expect his car costs more than that to be honest yeah and and then my firstborn niece also beautiful not ugly yesterday was her 31st (laughs) birthday so two family birthdays uh, this week and then on Monday I had one of my weirdo outings to meet a new Facebook friend I invited myself around I uh, it was postponed I was going to do her originally, the first visit, on the day I had to postpone you as well because I'd had the night out with the full moon and the pub quiz and I was too knackered. Do you remember? Well, on Monday, we sat in the sun for a couple of hours and we got burned. And she's she and her young family, husband, two small boys, are 20 years younger than me. They're in their 40s. And they're making plans. I'm not going to say too much because I'm sure most of this was shared in confidence. For a new life outside the UK. And I felt a degree of envy because whilst I have plans to travel more overseas, I'm not making plans in my 60s to make a life overseas. But if I were in my 40s, I might be making plans to live my life overseas. I felt very much in sync with her and that the the UK as it is now, were I in their shoes, I would be planning something just like that. Helped very much by the fact that her husband, whilst British, also has a passport in the other country that they're contemplating going Mm. to make a new life in. Uh, So that was quite exciting. I came away thinking, hmm, if I were doing that, where would I go? I just thought, you know, yeah, right, well done, I would too. Um, I took delivery yesterday of a nightie and a dressing gown in shocking pink from Land's End, a size smaller than I've ever been able to wear in living memory, Uh, which is just as well as I'm back on the low carb with Emma, who I'm sharing with. She and I started three years ago, and we're going for another stone in a month in what was formerly known as uh, the House of Carbs, because it was at, when I got down here, it was actually stuffed full of chocolate, which made life quite difficult. And this will go out too late for one of our, our most loyal listeners, Kath, to hear, because uh, we are. this will go out a week on Friday, which is June the 1st, and she and I are having supper the night before, because although she lives in the north of England, she will be down near me for a consultation with a I was going to say a psychopath, but that's not what I mean. A consultation a with a homeopath, a, high, a homeopath or something like that. Um, something with path on the end. Uh, yeah. So it'll go out too late for Kath to hear this, but she'll laugh when she hears it because we have this fantastic sense of humour in common. But one of the other things that we have in common is Menorca, where I think her family own a house. But, but specifically the shoes they make in Menorca. And I've just bought a pair to wear to our supper meeting just for fun. So new clothes, which is it's always quite fun. Now, Back to the point we were making earlier about the GDPR emails I've ignored. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, some of those, some of those that wrote to me, I have zero memory of ever yeah. having had any communication or relationship with them ever. And I'm a woman, it must be remembered, who's all over emails uh, every day. I'm at zero inbox every day. I unsubscribe from everything I don't want every day. And I still got a whole raft of them, which I'm hoping they'll just disappear. Uh, But you've made the point that only the ones that have written to me about the privacy policy won't disappear. But, um, you know, as I'm saying here, I wouldn't bank on it. Bar stewards will continue to spam us. And most of those ones don't even have an unsubscribe link. So how can those be stopped? How can they? We can't even dob them in, can we? 
No, well, I, th- I imagine there is a way to do it, but it involves too much of our lives. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, talking about low tech in your first bit, and of course, much too much effort. But uh, the other thing, which does link in finally in this section to uh, what's fueled my fire, a variety of clients, old and new, really interesting discussions, dilemmas and business deals. There's one guy I'm helping do quite a, a high level interesting four-party business deal which required us to do some serious thinking which was uh, is refreshing and quite often my work is very emotional and less brainy sometimes than I'm good at so it's quite nice to have a brainy um, requirement this week so yeah. and we're doing a sort of business sale purchase property options hybrid deal thing oh very nice <laughs> i know i know quite exciting anyway that's 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 all of it is pretty personal but there you go that's my what's gone on in my life yeah. this week well it's all good hang on the greek air force is going overhead oh dear can you hear them i can i've also got drilling but then say la v also you know may time of year for people building an extension <laughs> Yes, so uh, you put out a request and I copied it into our group and somebody has come forward. It's a question which I think we will both enjoy. It's about building a community and the questioner, who I have spoken to for eight minutes this morning because she wants to remain anonymous and I didn't want to hear too much so that I couldn't forget it and then it wouldn't be anonymous anymore, if that makes any sense. Yeah. She says, what does she say? I'm currently working through how to build a new community as I take my business in a slightly different, more niched direction. So the question is, why have a community at all? How to build it from scratch? How to do it? Why bother? Yes. <laughs> well, want, shall, we, shall we do with why? Should we start with why? Why, why yeah. would somebody have a community? Oh, let me tell you why she didn't have one before. Um, never felt the need to build a community before because my thing was all about individual relationships, working with people one to one. And the new thing is much bigger, a bit more like it, it reminded me. I made, I was, I, I mentioned to her because this is what she put me in mind of Roger Hamilton's, uh, you know, global community of, uh, as she called it, change makers and legacy leavers. Um, you know, people with missions, big missions in the world are her clients and she's been working with them one to one. But now she feels the need that if she creates a community, they'll be working together, connecting with each other, networking with each other and becoming greater than the sum of their parts. I think yeah. that's the brief. Yeah. I mean, the first reason to build a community is pe- people like to join things and it's a very small commitment from them to join a free community if they're interested in the topic. So, you know, in Robert Cialdini's influence book, he talks about getting mini commitments out of people, and that is a mini commitment. People love to join. They love being in a community. They love connection. They especially love connection with people like themselves, so that's why they would join a community like that. But from a very bald point of view, you know, it's a, it's a community of people who are interested enough in you to put their hands up a little bit, so it's a community to market to. And yeah. you market to them by demonstrating your value. That's the nicest way to do it. And we yep. know it works. And we've always yep. done it, haven't we? Yes. And the first thing I ever did when I had my first little five-page website called nicolacancross.com, pre-money gym days, was put a link to join my Yahoo group it was in those days. Yeah. And people joined. You know, they came to the website, they looked around, they liked what they saw, they clicked the link to join and they joined. And that, that was just, it was just another place to put information that would help people and you're winning their trust by doing that so if it's a free group let's go to tech for a moment yahoo group probably still exists we probably wouldn't do it anymore google group still exists i do use those actually facebook groups um if it's a free group we probably wouldn't want to pay for infrastructure for that would we no i definitely would use a facebook group because that's where people are and uh, you know they're making groups better all the time i was reading something today about uh, from social media examiner that talked about units you've got a thing called units in your facebook group now which the one complaint about facebook groups was it it was impossible to find anything and so they're trying to address that now i think by creating these unit things but you've got a challenge in that if you get everyone nice and cozy and comfy in your free facebook group 
then you've got, when when they to convert to customers, you've got to get them off Facebook because at some point Facebook is going to start putting ads into your group for a start. They might they might they get they're already very antsy if they think that your people are paying to join your group. So it's okay to have a group as um, an extra a free thing, or it's okay okay to have a group as a added value thing for a paid product but there has to be a paid product it can't just be pay pay to join my facebook group so, so at the moment i don't think she's thinking of this as paid how i get around what you've just said is uh, when people move from my free group which is called ask judith and become a client in either of my paid groups which also both have um attached facebook groups i remove them from the free group because i don't want them overwhelmed actually i don't want them yeah. to try and be all over everything i'm doing anywhere if they're working with me and say small business big magic i want them in that group yeah absolutely and I, I and i'm doing it for them really actually to get them focused not not try to see everything i do everywhere you know I, I think that's a great idea i've never done that but i think i will do that from now on removing people from the free group once they join your um the only problem is that if they if they stop working with you they, they've then got to remember to go and hunt down your free group and they want to join it again well i think by then they know you they know where you are they know what you offer they know how to refer to you they know how to come back if they want to yeah and if they want to be in a group they can be yeah. i mean i also with both of my paid groups they're not the groups themselves the facebook groups themselves aren't paid but the you know they are they commit to a year in either of my groups i add them to the facebook group i take them out when their year is over or or their four years are over or five years yeah. is yeah. over or whatever but i also subscribe them to a google group and i make sure that the facebook group has an administrator so in case one is ever banned from facebook for whatever reason accidental yeah. mostly <laughs> i can still communicate with them on facebook through the administrator which is usually one of the you know more senior members of the group who's good at admin and i can still communicate with them via email in the google group so it's no both groups have only about 20 25 people it's no sweat to just go and add them to the Google group and, and send them the joining email, which says, you know, uh, this is just a backup. We never use it. Yeah. So you're using Google groups as uh, like I'm using my forum. Well, we still use the Google groups on Monday morning in Club 100 for the email check-ins. And as you say, I mean, I find Facebook groups quite searchable as well, actually, but they are technically more searchable a Google group. So you can go back to the report you put in there last week. You can see everything you've ever posted, anything anybody else has posted. You can search on a topic. Um, you know, we, we use, we do use it in club 100. We don't use it in the other group. It's just my backup, but it's good to know they're there. But I don't think that tech is what she's talking about. I think she's talking about the bigger sense of what constitutes a community. And I think I said to her, I think that'll be different for you, different for me and different from Nicola, because I think that the community you create around you is you know the sort of community you think you would want to belong to or you think your clients would want to belong yeah. to yeah absolutely and the thing is it's don't underestimate the difficulty of getting a community going you know you, you're going to have it's the 80 20 rule uh, you know you've got to get to 80 people in 100 people before eight, 20 people will start you know collaborating and communicating and asking questions and things my forums just got to that level now i think with about 200 people in it where they're actually talking to each other via the forum rather yeah. than, you know, and answering each other's questions. And yeah. that's the sign of a strong, you know, a growing, strong community. Yes, I yeah. think that's nice, especially when you know as the leader of the community that somebody else in the community has got a better expertise that on the question that's being asked. So I say, I'll leave that one to want somebody else to answer because, yeah. you know, I know there are experts in this group and I sometimes tag the experts. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the forum. Just remind me, I know I ask this often, what are you using for that? Is it Zen Foro? It's N four O, yes. Yeah. And I'm re I'm doing that because it's it's you know, it's inexpensive, it's robust and it it works like I, I it does all the things I want it to. And, and that's it, for payers, isn't it, Nicola? Or is there a free level of that as well? Uh, it's, it's it's for payers only. It's yeah. for payers. And it connects to a WordPress site? Uh, it's got a WordPress site on the front end as the sales page, if you like. Yes. It's actually hosted on WordPress, um, so it's under my control and yep. my, my hosting. So it's yep. not like Facebook can close it down. No, that's right. Coming back just for a minute to the thing about, you know, engaging the community and getting it moving. It's not as onerous as you think. You don't have to put stuff in every day. But what you should do is perhaps have a, a question, ask a question in your group a couple of times a week 
and add new content to it. So, for example, our podcast gets fed into my forum and so does my own vzine. So they get it. And also I record the Q&A calls I do on a Thursday and, and put the recordings of that onto YouTube and then feed that into it. So there's plenty of stuff going into my forum all the time. So if someone comes along and clicks the new posts link, there's always something new to see and engage with. Yeah. And ditto, you know, I think you, you've just got to think about how easiest and best you can put new content into your group wherever it's hosted to engage the people until they get to the point where there's some sort of natural chat going on. Well, actually, and I'd like to make a distinction there, which I think is important. Now, before I do, um, the client that's asking this question, the colleague that's asking this question, she's not a client, does have a podcast, so that can go in there as well, yeah. is a natural engager and creator of content, I think, including video. So she'd be all right with that as well. I'm not sure whether she has a newsletter. She might have. But just sticking those in there to me, constitute broadcasting, not engagement. And I agree with you that engagement is when they all start to chat amongst themselves with some input from us. And I I see them as quite distinctly different, actually. And I think that's our question's opportunity is, do you want to have a community where you're visibly the leader and the broadcaster, or do you want to be down in amongst them and engaging with them and letting them, you know, make it, their own through so customer led I suppose rather than leader led if that makes sense and you could do like you know Facebook lives into groups as well so and you you can set presumably you can make the settings so that anyone could do a Facebook live in but I'd be very wary of that (laughs) yes no I wouldn't allow that I think our questioner is a natural Facebook liver I certainly I think certainly I she's not scared of videos so I think okay. creating content won't be a problem yeah. I think the 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 nature of a community is interesting certainly I think of it as and explain this to her this morning as a list with without being called such because it's a community of people who are interested in the sort of things I'm interested in in my work and outside so it's quite a sort of broad thing in a way and it's got that nice the concept of the community has got that nice thing which is those that are not interested won't notice or care and those that are will feel connected I've actually just started up a a super life Facebook group oh great and I did that because there is a really good website called Perea Stimani where you can put things on like I need a lift to Kalamata on the 3rd of October and I've got a mattress for sale and things like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yes. Um, it's it's volunteer run. It's it's it is quite responsive, but it's not as immediate as a Facebook group, and everyone's on Facebook. So, and it's growing at the rate of knots. We're getting like ten, nine or ten people a day joining up because, of course, people are find it very easy to share. The, you know, once they join a group like that, they share it with all their friends who they think might be interested as well. So, yes. you're taking advantage of the shareability of it. And did they just naturally do that, or did you ask them? No, well, you know, I, I think I, I started with the right club ladies and just said share with anyone you think might be interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so an encouragement to share at the beginning to help the first 100 people yeah, get right. in there. Or and whatever. I said, you know, yeah. make it, I, I was very specific, you know, Greek, Greek people and English people are welcome, and we've had, we've had a good smattering of Greek people sign up. So I think you've got a good thing there where they, everybody has something in common, which is the place where they live. Yeah, and I think what our client, our questioner has to think about is, what's the purpose of the community that you're creating not just for you but for the joiners yeah exactly and you know there's there's well there's place communities all over all over facebook now yes there are selling communities you know so there's a shore and buy sea community and there's also shore and buy sea selling group as well so yeah Try and keep, you know, try and be very clear about whether, you know, what's allowed and what isn't. Nobody will ever read your terms and conditions, but it's a good idea to have some. Yes, it is. And actually, my uh, our, our lady that's asking is, um, it would be more at ease. In fact, I think she used, ironically, she used the word strategy this morning, which was one uh, that we discussed. So yeah. she's more strategic in her thinking. I don't think she would have any difficulty in creating or enforcing rules. And and, and we let's call them guidelines because it's softer. But yeah. I think that's a good idea, isn't it? Because you don't want people spamming it and advertising in it and doing all sorts of... Yeah. I've never had that. Have you? People doing that? Uh, yes, I get it quite a lot. <laughs> and what do you do then? Just give them the bums rush and evict them? It depends how, how bad it is. If it's something that, you know, where I'm thinking they might not have realised, I'll just give them a, a, a private warning and, and delete the comment. And um, you've got the opportunity to delete comment and delete 
the commenter. So I, I, I just delete the comment and then I PM them privately. And then it's, well, it's basically three strikes and you're out. And, and what have they done to offend? What sorts of things? Well, they, they put very obvious LMM opportunities in there and, and things like affiliate links and things like that. Right. And so, is that in your rules not to? Yes. Yeah. Okay. On. And the other thing to remember is we can change those rules and update them every time we realise what we've forgotten to include in yes. them by people's behaviour. Yeah. It doesn't have to be comprehensive from day one. It can be no. added as you go. Yeah. I think the, the thing is... It's, you know, jab, 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 right hook. Gary Vaynerchuk says you should give five times before you ask for anything. And even asking for anything is even like looking at any marketing material. So be, be generous, allow other people to be, you know, be generous and help each other and build a good, good sort of feeling in there. And, and it's, it all adds to the warm fuzzies, doesn't it? When, it? when someone's making a buying decision, if they've been hanging out in your group and seeing how you interact with people, they're going to be much more confident that you're going to treat them well. Well, I'm just having a look at my list of Facebook groups that I'm a member of or that I run. Let's start with the ones I'm a member of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And they're all about St. Martin, my Caribbean island. So I only belong to other people's groups where where I'm pursuing my hobby, passion, enthusiasm, and might want to create a community even when I move out there. All the other groups are mine and mine alone. I'm not interested generally in being a member of somebody else's community. I like to be the boss. And I've got two here for my coaching groups. And I've got my free one. I've got ours. And then I've got three around my hobbies and interests. One is Uh, about books one is about low carb and one is about loving our life and what I would say is that one two three four five six seven seven of those all of them are about marketing whether or not they look like it because I'm engaging with people on topics of mutual interest which would make them more likely likely to refer me or hire me as their coach based on what we have in common with each other yeah absolutely and the other thing is you can, now you've got a page, you can link your page to your group and vice versa. Yes, I love that actually, because yeah, I think right. it shows everybody easily how to find the different ways they can play with you online. Yeah, yeah mm. exactly. And, and you know, when I, was, I had a heck of a try at time explaining all this to the right club ladies. Yeah. I mean, they just, some of them just couldn't grasp the difference at all, but they're getting it now. Basically, you know, your page is for announcing things and, and putting up things that you want people to see. And then you're broadcasting. Group- yeah, and, and yep. the interaction about the things that you're all in, interested in. So yep. Yeah, yeah, engaging. So broadcast on a page, engage in a group. Yeah, and yep. remember the, that you if you put something in a group, it can't be shared. So you yep. have to put it on your page first, share it into your group, and then people will then be able to click through from your group onto your page and share it from there. Yeah, You have to just educate people that that's what you, you need them to do if it's something specific. And which other communities, just give me one or maybe two examples of communities that you're a member of that you really value. So if you can explain why it's valuable to you to be a member, I know, I know at least one you're going to say, but for the benefit of the listener, you know, what do you value when you're a member of somebody else's community? I'm a member of Dan Norris's Mastermind Group, and I, that's a, I think I pay a membership for that. And um, anything about that, what about that, that is, you know, makes you want to be in it? It's not too big. It's not thousands of people. It's a couple of hundred people. Okay. And it's, I, I know that I can get really good, solid referrals and, and recommendations from people in there without people trying to sell me their services. I'm also a member of the Internet Marketing Super Friends, which I don't interact with so much now. Mike Hill doesn't own it, but I do still... Um, I get a, an email digest once a week of the hottest discussion topics. So that's something you could do. You can, um, you can, uh, is that from a Facebook group though? It's not, is it? It's from a forum. They can't do an email digest of the hottest no. topics from a Facebook group. Can you? No, they, they've got a VA who manually compiles the hottest. Oh, God. Topics. <laughs> I know. But, you know, it, it yeah, but our, our, our questioner is a one woman band. I know. <laughs> Don't start there. <laughs> you know, it just it's just something to think about. You know, and I've yep. started I've started putting um, in my weekly email that sums up what people have missed on the podcast and on the blog. I've started putting in you know a link, not a link, um, a, just a roundup of what we've been discussing in the forum. Just yep. to remind people, I've got a forum, and yep. you know that's one more one more way to remind people. Yeah. So you could just say, oh, okay, what's what's the theme of the week been in in the in your group? That, you know, in the community this week. Yeah talk about the theme of the week yeah mine's all been obviously about gdp 
Yes. <laughs> I've just been wrangling with the mail team my beating for heart. Yeah. the last hour <laughs> with a client trying to get, a, get you know, MailChimp are putting all sorts of gubbins on these, these forms. Uh, anyway, don't get me started. Yeah, so there's lots and lots of benefits. It's nice to, you know, I, I you know, I'm, I'm a, a bit of a loner, but I still like to belong to communities, even, that, you know, far well, from... Maybe, well, maybe those two facts are not as unrelated as they might sound. I'm a bit of a loner and I like to belong to communities. Maybe yeah. that's why. If I'm interested in, in, in them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like minds. Yes. It's, it's ease. We can connect up all the way around the world because we're in a virtual group. And it doesn't preclude having get-togethers, which I think my, our questioner would like to run occasionally. And we know that the thing that virtual groups love best is the opportunity to come together. Your ICF conference reminded us of that. Yeah. And James Schramko, um people, you know, followers and, and members, they, they have regular meetups all around the world. They use Meetup, you know, the software Meetup. Yeah. And they put the Meetup links for Brisbane and, and Sydney. They get together once a month, that lot. So yes. it's, it's, it's a way of facilitating offline meetups and let's have a think if we can just a couple of minutes um how to grow how to grow the community are you saying it would be naturally a slow start or what well if you've got a mailing list obviously you'd invite everyone in your mailing list onto it because and that's another way it's great because if if someone um joins your mailing list and then immediately joins your group because it goes out on the email that you know the first thing email that goes out afterwards then if they later unsubscribe from your mailing list, they're probably quite likely to stay in your group. So mm. it's a way of retaining people in yes. the way that they find most conducive. Yes, I'm certainly uh, 90% happier to be in something online to follow people or be in something than I am to receive an email. Absolutely, yeah. It's one more way of building a list in, by any other name. as Yeah, said. yeah. Anything um, else? I, well, uh, the thing you mustn't do is use the facility where it says invite on the side of your group because they actually just add people to yes it. no that is horrid absolutely right yes and i'm remembering as well a book i wanted to recommend yours is robert cialdini's is it called influence what's it called yeah yeah uh, mine is engagement from scratch by danny eney i-n-y oh I, i've interviewed danny yeah i know and yeah. uh, his book is quite old now but you can get it from for free if you google not that you need to but i i it's about engagement and for me community is all about engagement yeah See, I've got lots of group invitations. So now, see, this is interesting. Yes, see, look, I, people have been adding me to things. And well, I, there's no way to invite you. Unlike a page, you can no. invite people to join your page, but you can't invite people to join your group. And I think that's a real Facebook failing, don't you? Yeah, I do. I do, because, um, because it is a problem. And going down the side, you wouldn't know, unless you were internet savvy, that the invite is actually just an ad, because it looks like it. I mean, actually, oh, no, it does say now, add member, add member, add member. So it, they've changed the, um, the phrasing in the group there. And then for, for people listening who get really, really, really cross about being added to groups me. Uh, and me, could yeah. I just remind everybody that it is simple as one click not to join? Sorry? Well, it is as simple as one click to leave the group, yes. which is what I do. So everybody that invites me, I just click, gone. So I don't know why everybody gets their knickers in a knot about that. Then, you know, it's, it's easier to do the one click than it is to moan about it. <laughs> okay, good point. <laughs> right. Well, I'm off to un, un, unjoin a lot of groups where the people have just added me. I mean, I'm in hundreds of groups. Yeah, no, I'm not. I think that's important. And to encourage our clients and listeners to only be in the ones that you value. And remember, of course, you can rejoin at any time. If, you, if you're too draconian with your cull and then realise you missed something, you know, it's just one click again to ask if you can come back in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, so one more thing we haven't discussed. On Facebook, you have the choice between closed, secret and open or something like that, don't you? Yeah. There's three choices of group. Yeah. One is nobody knows who's in it and nobody knows it exists, which is secret, I think. Closed means people can see who's in it, but not what's going on in there, but they can ask to join it because they can see it's available. And the other one, open, which is open is where you have your free group and you want the community to grow, I guess, isn't it? I don't know. I think open is where you're, you join it and you can see what's going on if you're not a member. Yeah. Um, but you so my free one, I think I asked Judith, I think I do. I think that's open. I'm not sure. But anyway. And if it's open, does that mean people can share things from it then? Oh, I don't know. Let me go in and have a look. Talk yeah. amongst yourselves, caller, while I look about that. I, I may be wrong. I might have gone for the less draconian of the secret ones. Let's have a look. Uh, 
groups ask judith does it say it's oh it's a closed group i think an open when you start a group where's the button that says start a group and it gives you the choices anyway it's worth knowing um questioner and listeners that you get a choice about that yeah absolutely anything else we need to yes i think we should feed back to facebook that we would prefer that button instead of add member to invite member Absolutely. Yeah, well, they're not going to take any notice of us, so it's a waste of time. Well, I can't believe we're the only two people that want it in the world. <laughs> Perhaps we could start a group to call for them to change. <laughs> well, uh, or maybe everybody on the podcast could send Facebook, I don't know even how to send an email, do you? What is this? Embed invitation. That looks fun. Oh, so you can embed an invitation to join your group. Oh, in your emails. Oh, that's exciting. Um, so go into a group, any group. Yeah, yeah. And where it says over on the right hand side, add members. Yeah. Embed invite. Yes, and it's blue linky, and you can put it in your emails. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Isn't that nice? We just found something out today just by talking. We did. Well, I imagine it's an increased functionality. They do that all the time, don't they? Sneak in new functionality. Yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. I should do that immediately. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? Yes. I mean, I love communities. Yes, you you really do enjoy communities. I do, you? I do. It's a lovely place to. It's so easy because uh, I've got my computer open all you know every moment I'm awake to to just reply to somebody. Isn't just I'm very quick typist. I think that's why. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? Mm. Word of the week. Yeah, you go first. Well, uh, it's got to be strategy, I'm afraid, because I didn't know what the word meant for a long time. And it's only when I found out that it meant a plan, I got intrigued by the whole thing of how can you create a plan around something that you don't know is going to work? And then it was how can you create a plan that you don't know is going to work? But the thing is, if you don't have a plan, it's pretty much guaranteed not to work. So having a plan is better than no plan at all. So having a strategy is better than no strategy at all. And after a while, I suppose, in an industry that you know very well, you, you start to know which strategies traditionally have worked. It's a fascinating thing, I think, the whole idea of creating a plan and testing it out and see if it works (laughs) it's a weird thing i think a plan is a friendlier word than a strategy but certain personality types amongst my clients about a third of them mm, no probably 25 percent of them demand and ask and really feel quite an urgent need for a strategy and a plan yeah and a written one too you know with with lots of sections in it was I think perhaps we get to a point where we've got an instinctive feel of what kind of a plan might work in any given situation. And, um, and so we don't feel the need to write all down all the detail, do we? But I'm, I'm surprising myself by how much I'm enjoying working through the five questions that's, that, that help you make a strategy and playing to win. I, I'm really surprising yeah. myself. Yeah, I know you find this stuff ineffably boring. <laughs> I, I'm, strategy is a word. When my clients use that word to me, it's just like a, my heart goes cold. I think, yeah. oh, God. I know, but it's some, like you say, some people need it and some people, some people who should need it, sorry, who should do it, don't, don't do it. I think it depends on your business, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think if you, you, if people, if listeners like you consider that they have a business as you do, then there's a greater need for it than for those of us who consider ourselves to be self-employed and are just having a lot of fun employing ourselves for money. Yes. But let's agree to disagree on that. No, absolutely. Uh, yes. My word of the week is language, the words we choose, uh, keeping an eye on what we say. <clears throat> because when I was at my Facebook friend's house on Monday, I noticed I kept saying it's hard. And she used the word struggle. And because we're, we're both um, aware... Uh, awoken uh, we deliberately chose to reframe those words and thus our experiences of life and work and our outcomes but I, I, I notice a bit like I said last week where the lady used but instead of and you know often our words are just lazy habitual choices yeah. but our language d- does dictate our experience and if we expect it to be hard or a struggle guess what it'll be so uh, language is my word of the week mm, nice I like that well, I think actually for some people, it could be just as dull as strategy is to me, because if they don't think in words, then that would be meaningless to them. Would you, if they don't think in words? Well, people, if, if people are not wordy or they don't think in words, some people think in feelings, some people think in colours, some people think in, you know, uh, gut. People think in different ways. People don't, people are not, we're wordy. We like words. We write. Yeah. 
and we notice what we speak. And you and Sarah used to do that in the bull pit, if you remember, you know, pick each other up <laughs> on the words that you're using. But, but actually, it, language and words are not as, not, it's just like str- uh, str- strategy. They're not the same thing to everybody. They don't have the same power or balance. They might see in, think in pictures, you know, it's different for people. Oh, I thought everyone thought in words. I thought that was what language was all about. No. Well, language is all about that, but not everybody's system is about that. Oh, okay. So um, I imagine you haven't got any project updates then? No, I've got a small one, actually. I've squeezed Ooh. one out. Um, once, a, once a month, I experience something that I expect you do too, which is I wake up to four notices in my inbox from Amazon, which tell me what my royalties will be in GBP, USD, yep. Euros, and for Kindle. And this month, the four of them combined come to just over £100. Whoa. And when you consider the hefty chunk that Amazon takes, that's not at all bad. And if I could achieve that every month, you know, 1200 a year for as long as it lasts, not a bad return on doing something I absolutely love, writing a book. And yesterday, I almost convinced myself I was ready to think about writing volume two. But of course, that depends on me being able to dra- drag up another... 52 questions which are not the same as the ones I've answered before but I'm thinking out of putting out a call for those in June and July so I can do the writing again in August. Oh very exciting I still I mean I'm, I'm, I love it when your questions pop up on Facebook I think that you know it must be doing you good in terms of marketing because it looks well on that topic something interesting did happen actually um you know when you have a contact form on your website and I put on mine something like I don't say it as boldly as this, but I say, if you're trying to flog me something, I won't be, <laughs> I won't be replying to you. Yeah. Um, but twice recently, I've had an approach. I think it's from separate people. And they are asking me, <laughs> and I've not replied to either of them either. They are asking me how I'm doing that thing on Twitter where I get 100,000 impressions a month. And of course, I don't know how I'm doing that thing on Twitter. So I can't reply to them. I can't reply saying, no idea. <laughs> you still uh, happening then? Yes. Oh, that's so strange. It is. It's not doing me any good at all, or no, relatively speaking. But people want to know how I'm doing the thing that's not doing me any good at all. So I just don't bother to get involved in it. But so um, is there somewhere they can, the external people can see how many impressions. Well, people who presumably follow my Twitter feed, or people who are perhaps Twitter strategists or something, they want to know how I, as a single person, they want to know what systems I'm using that my URL turns up so often on their Twitter feed. Oh, there is something definitely going on there, isn't there? That's it is. Actually, while you're thinking about that, let me read you the email that I woke up to this morning that I deleted. Then we'll see the precise wording on this. Right, in the meantime, I'm going to look at your Twitter feed. Is it Judith Morgan? No, Business Oracle? No, Judith Morgan. So where was the thing that came in this morning? Yes, Lucinda. I keep on coming across tons of tweets featuring your URLs. Are you using Minix Social Signals Boss for that or are you doing it manually? I'm just intrigued how you can generate a thousand Twitter posts with your website URL in a day. I would be most appreciative if you could share your strategy with me. Oh, sorry, Lucinda, I haven't got a strategy. It says you've done 23,000 tweets in all the time you've been on Twitter. Quite. So how can I be generating a thousand a day? That's ridiculous. So I've ignored her because I think she's another version of somebody trying to sell me something. Yeah. I've never even heard of Minix social, whatever it is. But anyway, I am still getting 100,000 impressions a month, I think is probably what she's... And I am paying somebody to tweet my book every day, two or three times, but that doesn't get me 100, 3,000 impressions a day, does it? No, I tried that and I gave, I gave up on it because it wasn't bringing any traffic at all to my book page, though. So. Well, I don't think Twitter does. But actually, it can't do any harm. That's the point, no. because you've got Twitter covered for a very small sum of yeah. money. Well, your Twitter feed looks great, but I can't, I can't see, no, I can't see anything that... So how no, she, I know. Well, how does she know you're generating that number of... No idea. Oh, well. We don't know enough about Twitter, do we? It was, no, it's a mystery. You can ask Veronica. Yeah. Veronica might know. I'm not interested, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Well, because uh, Veronica will go all, all I am on me. All, te- all techie on you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I haven't got time for that. Okay. 
All right. Do you want me to look at our um, our stats for the podcast? Yeah, ideally, yes, if you can. And if we need to pause this while you log in, let's pause oh, no, it because we've been it. weeks since we've been in there. No, it's all right. I'll just send it. If... Have you got any project updates apart from I this? I've got two. Okay, so, so it looks quite looks quite high, but not a massive spike like that one at the beginning. There, well, we had two two good, very good months of nearly five thousand um, downloads, but that was because we were featured, we think, on Radio Public, don't we? Yes, but yes. Still more, and we've latched back to normal levels. Well, we haven't. We're higher because if you look, it's only the twenty uh, fourth of May, and we're higher than we were in February. Yeah, so but February's twenty eight days, so that's almost a match, if you see what I mean. Days February out. short, February short. May will be bigger because it's longer, but it's comparable, very comparable, isn't it? So that's interesting because what we've learned from that is that the lovely boost we had in March and April from Radio Public really did help and make a difference. So what we probably ought to do when we've got an idle moment is go and have a look at Radio Public and see if we can, if there's anything we can do to pay them a small amount of money to promote us or something like that. Yeah, because we have definitely acquired new listeners from it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I wonder if they have a sort of commercial arrangement where you can pay them. Well, I th- as far as I know, not, but I, w- I will go and check. So there we go. Mm. But, but it, obviously, we are continuing to send traffic there, so they should be continuing to feature us. But they pay us to advertise them, in effect. I, I remember that um, Blog Talk Radio had it the other way around as well. Um, you could pay them for more reach, but... I don't, I'm making it up. I'm just being logical here. Okay. And I don't like this new back end of the Libsyn statistics thing. I used to like it when it was all nice and green and white. Nobody ever likes the, a new interface, do they? No, mm. no, I don't like it. Right. So let me tell you about my project updates. Yes, I have, I'm working up to doing another 30 day challenge. And because the last one worked so well and it's a, a, a little bit, and everyone at the International Coach Federation thing said, I hope you've got another one soon. So Should I'm you do that. one just for the people who were that are there? No, I'm just going to do one for the seventy odd people on the waiting list, and um, and I'll also advertise it on Facebook. So okay, I'm going to I'm going to start on the first Monday of. Let me just give you the exact date for the podcast. I'm going to start it on Monday, the fourth of June. Okay, that's lovely because this goes out on the first of June. Give me a proper link that I can put in. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. I'll give you a direct link to um, get onto the waiting list for the challenge and. Lovely. It'll start on Monday the 4th of June. Do you want them to join the waiting list over that weekend? Or do you want uh, them yes. to? Yes, yes. Please. yes. Okay. Because they'll, okay. they'll be automatically moved into the, um, the okay. start of it then. Okay. And then the other thing I've come up with is I was watching Yvonne Halling. And Yvonne Halling is one of my, um, she did the 30 Day Challenge very well. She's a, mem- a client of mine. And she's continuing to produce great content. And she does a masterclass every month, which is a bit like a, like, well, it's a live webinar, but she does a lot of teaching on it. And um, she gets clients from that. And in fact, Yvonne and I had a really great conversation because she was taught, she was thinking about hiring me to do her Facebook ads for her. And we had, because she's one of my clients, we had a very long, complicated something going on in, in the membership area where we worked out exactly based on her existing conversion figures, whether it would be worth her while to pay someone to do Facebook ads for her. And we worked out that without an upsell on the back end of her um, membership, she you know, a top, a higher level, she wasn't going to wash her face with Facebook ads. So that was good because it meant that she didn't spend money she didn't need to. I taught myself out of a client by being, you know, an honest person. <laughs> but I'd always rather do that than have, have someone spend money and it not work. Um, and so I have thought to myself, I might do a masterclass myself because uh, I'm, you can have up to 100 people on a Zoom meeting. And I'm just going to test out, a, you know, a low key sort of version. And then if it's any good, I might do one once a month because I feel the need to have um, an ongoing sales process for the Clicks and Leads Academy. And it's, it's been hard to get leads in the front end using Facebook, although I have just um, found a new strategy for, because they, they suddenly took offense to my vzine. I haven't been able to promote my vzine on Facebook. To, and that was the front end of my funnel. So I've been looking for another front end that Facebook won't object to. And uh, the masterclass could be it because it's live. It's not a webinar and Facebook can't yeah. object to it on, that, on those grounds. Okay. So that's my project updates there. And guess who is the only living soul I've spoken to this morning before you? Yvonne Halling. Yes. Oh, really? How funny. On a completely unrelated topic. Oh, how funny. Yeah. Well, good for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So who or what's impressed then? Oh, I've got a good one here. I think you're going to like this. It's very short as well. Uh, I thoroughly unexpectedly enjoyed the royal wedding, a beautiful sunny day in Windsor with everybody looking happy. The surface was deliciously quirky. I thought my favourite yeah. fact of the day, my favourite fact of the day, and Emma was out of the room. I always find that slightly annoying. If you're going to watch something, be in the room with it. Don't turn it on and leave the room. But when she came back in, I was able to say to her, guess what I just learned? The British fashion industry is bigger than the British car industry. Wow. Come on. That's impressive, isn't it? For people like, who like fashion, like you. Yeah, that is, that is really amazing. I know. And I love a business fact, me. So yeah. trust me to be watching the Royal Wedding, but pick up the business fact. Well, you've got to, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't get past me. I'm too interested. I realise I've got two in here. Shall I whiz on to my second one? Yeah, go on then. There's a lady. I'm not sure she listens to our podcast. She might, <clears throat> but she definitely reads my newsletter every week. And she writes to me after most of them. And her name is Catherine. And she has an Etsy shop. Well, no, no, no. She's a mahoosive um, top level consultant. But one of the things she also does is she has an Etsy shop, which offers cross stitch patterns for download. And I don't mind a bit of cross stitch myself. She's, uh, you know, she's a fan of my newsletters. And she wrote to suggest that she made some patterns of my sayings, like stop it immediately. And when it's right, it's easy for me and anyone else in her shop to cross stitch them. So we're working on creating a threesome in a photo frame that she's going for a sort of graffiti look and obviously we're trying to get the colours right especially the pinks isn't that fun oh that is brilliant I, I know hear myself get excited about embroidery though yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, last time I did embroidery was in the 90s and I got a funny lump on my hand from repetitive strain but I'm not prepared I'm not sure I'm prepared for sort of physical um distortion but uh, I'm loving the idea I think that's called a ganglion uh, it was, but it went down again. But you're supposed to bang a ganglion. Funnily enough, I'm seeing two of my cousins on Sunday. And my, our grandparents, my grandma, used to say that the treat, uh, you know, the one we have in common, used to say the treatment for a ganglion was to bang it with a heavy book. Well, I'm not really into that kind of self-torture, but no. I'd rather it didn't come up in the first place or do anything that, you know, RSI-ish to, pro to provoke it. But we'll see. Well, mine is the new drama on well, it's BBC, isn't it? It's called Split. And it's about a divorce firm, firm of lawyers, all women divorce firm. It's a mother and two daughters, three daughters. No, two daughters, one's not in the firm. And one of the daughters has gone off on her own to uh, work for a, an ex-lover. And they're all coming up against each other in court. Have you not watched it? Oh, I've watched I'm waiting for you to finish before I oh, try to. Right. Okay, all right. And it's got an actress in it called Nicola something. And it's Nicola Walker. Name. She's fantastic. She, yeah. You'd watch her in a paint advert. She's so good. Yes, she is really good. And yeah. where's she been? I mean, what's she's she been, been in everything. Her? She's been oh. in everything. She's been in Spooks. She's been in that thing on ITV called Unforgotten. She's in everything. She's the, the casting director's first choice. And I think she's going to be in The Queen. She's, mm, I might be wrong about that. It might be Olivia Coleman. She, as The Queen gets older, I, anyway, I can't remember. But she's in everything. She's in um, that uh, last tango in Halifax as the farmer oh. that, that killed her husband or whatever. Um, she's in absolutely everything worth watching. If she's in it, watch it. However, yeah. I think it's a bit soapy for her, this. Do you? I think it's a bit soapy. I'm yeah. loving it. It's glamorous, but it's a bit soapy. Are you yeah. up to date? Did you see it last night or the night no. before? No, uh, it's, it's taken a soapy turn, that's what I want oh, to tell you. Oh, damn. Mm. But I agree with you. It's glamorous. It's got high production values. It's got gorgeous locations. It's got sexy people. It's got interesting sort of... Um, you know uh moral dilemmas it's yeah. got family difficulties it's got it's got everything actually all rammed in and who's the the man who's playing the, the father who's just come back he's another actor that you have you don't yes he, he is another old actor i can look him up for yeah. you in a minute um oh. but um have you finished on that topic or shall oh, i because no. no, there's something that you you just made me think of you know i'm a recent convert to the crown yes and the old actor in that, who actually isn't very old, who I think is the best, who's playing the ex-king who abdicated, his acting is superb. Yes, it's really fun, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 galloped, I galloped through that. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop watching that, The Crown. It was absolutely brilliant. I think the, there are lots of good people and lots of good stories in the split, actually. And they're a horrific family, aren't they, as well? Yeah, in terms yeah, of very dysfunctional. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> but, but really, really well. Um, you know, it's a completely believable. They, they behave really badly in just the way that real human families would. <laughs> well, my, the Morgans don't behave like that, I'll have you know. But my friend that I'm saying with said, oh, it's getting a bit close to the bone. So obviously it was getting quite close to her family. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. 
Yep. All right. All right. See you later. Yeah, speak soon. Bye. Okay, bye. How do they do it? Not a care and so free. Wanna step into the world. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 